And we're back. Welcome back to another episode of Hot Takes. This week, we are going to be diving into an explanation of how the global CBDC network would function today. Because these talking heads out there, they're always going to assert a narrative usually correlated with an agenda that the mainstream media wants you to get acclimated to so that you don't really know what's going on on the back scenes. So today, I'm going to explain to you how it works, and I'm going to demonstrate for you guys a working blueprint model that could be implemented today. Also, there's a whole nother rabbit hole of what the IMF actually is, how it works, If you guys want me to talk about the IMF specifically, let us know in the comments and I will do a video specifically on the derivatives of the IMF, the World Bank, the Brenton Wood Agreements, and why these operations exist today and how they are tied into the idea of the plot of globalizing the world in that very slow boiling frog process. But that's not on the agenda for today. So as you guys can see here in this little chart, and for those who are listening on Spotify, you guys can always go to the YouTube channel if you want to see the chart. Uh, You could go to the Discord, and there will be a place where you can download this diagram or chart. As you guys can see on the chart, it's pretty simplistic. So at the top, you guys can see these little icons. Those are the representation of the central banks around the world. You have the Federal Reserve, the Bank of England, the Bank of Japan, and the People's Bank of China. And then there's a little green icon, which is the representation of all the other world central banks. Because this is going to be something that all central banks will be able to utilize. And the reason why I use those five currencies is because later you'll You'll understand when I talk about the SDRs, its value is based upon the basket of the value of these five currencies, the yuan, the yen, the euro, the pound, and the dollar. So you have these central banks, and every central bank has its own ledger. And what a ledger is, it's a record of transactions that occur between its central banks and all the national, regional, and local banks. Because banks have to borrow money also, and it borrows money from the, from, in the United States from the Federal Reserve. And that money comes at a price, which is set by what we would call the Federal Reserve rate. And so the rate is basically the cost of money. And again, I'm going to simplify this because this is not the point of this. We could break down the Federal Reserve too in very nuanced detail if you guys are interested in that, but that's not what I'm going to do here. Let's say the rate is like 6%, 6.5%. If a bank needs to uh, needs money because it's low in liquidity, there are multiple programs. There's loaning, loaning windows. There's all kinds of ways that banks can get money from the Federal Reserve. But if the, if the Federal Reserve loans money to a bank, the cost of that money to the bank is that rate. Let's say it's at 6.5%. The bank receives, let's say, $100 million from the Federal Reserve. It gets that money at a rate of 6.5%. So the way banks make money is since they have to pay back 6.5%, they have to charge you a higher rate so they can get money. And this is why we would say money is expensive because the bank had to pay a lot of money for that money. So you're going to have to pay a lot of money for that money. Now, also on the opposite side, if the rates were really low, let's say at 0%, Basically, that's free money to the bank. So they can literally charge 1%, 2%. They're in the profits. And so that's when it becomes cheap money. And that's when they don't care. They'll loan anybody money. And so anyway, that's simplistically, that's what's going on in the United States on the Federal Reserve level and the banks. And the reason why I want to explain that is it's not going to be much different on the global level. You can replace the Federal Reserve and the way it operates with the International Monetary Fund, with the IMF. So you guys can see here on this diagram, they are the central banks. And then there's an arrow that goes down 
to the IMF. And so what the International Monetary Fund is going to do is basically operate as a currency issuer, the ones who give this currency, and they're going to provide an exchange where you can convert your country's currency for these SDRs. Now, that's not how SDRs currently work on IMF loans. IMF does currently give loans to countries. That's what the IMF does. The IMF acts as a means to provide liquidity to countries or access to real money today when countries are in a, at a financial stronghold and they don't have enough money to sustain their country. Like just the most recent loan was on June 30th, the IMF gave I think a $3 billion loan to Pakistan. So it's just recent. The IMF gives money all the time. But they allocate these loans in these SDRs. They're called special drawing rights. And what an SDR is basically, it itself is in a currency. It's like a claim, like an asset that you can turn in. And if you turn this in, the IMF members are obligated. It's a claim. They're obligated to give you X amount of money valued in that currency. So, and how you allocate that money is based upon the price of these five dominant currencies. Anyways, that's not really important. I mean, you can get a little technical there, but I think you can see what I'm saying. But anyways, the SDR currently is a claim to currencies. It itself is not a currency. But it is easy to formulate that the current SDR system, into an actual currency. And then it is going to have a float rate, an exchange rate, based upon the medium, the median of these five currencies. So it won't be directly pegged to a currency, but it's going to have a float exchange rate based upon the average of these five currencies. And so therefore, it's going to be less susceptible to wide variation than just having one isolated currency. So if you would hold the United States as an isolated currency and something traumatic happened in the United States, the value of the dollar could go down overnight. But if you had a centralized currency that is spread out over multiple countries, one country will have an effect, of course, on that centralized currency because it's correlated with an, uh, an average median of a basket of currencies. Nothing like if you were just holding that one currency. So you could imagine why this would be more stable than just having the United States as a reserve currency. You would have to have five countries tumble for it to really have that large of effect. There will be something called the SDR exchange. For a simplistic analogy, if you guys ever bought or sold crypto, you guys would understand basically what this looks like. If you ever played in the Forex market, it's same thing too. So you have your local currency, let's say the US dollar, and you want to buy Bitcoin. You have to go on some type of crypto exchange and you have to give them your dollars, allocate how much of Bitcoin you want to buy, and then they will exchange your dollars for Bitcoin and they will allocate that Bitcoin onto a Bitcoin wallet. And now you have Bitcoin. Exactly the same thing is going to happen for the SDRs on a global scale. You will have this SDR exchange. All the central banks of the world will go on to this SDR exchange, which is ran by the IMF. And they will be able to exchange their currency for SDRs for digital SDRs, not actual SDRs, so we'll call it DSDRs. And so instead of it being a claiming right, it will be utilized as the actual functioning centralized currency inside of this thing called the distributed SDR ledger. Now, the difference between these two is the central bank is a centralized ledger. Nobody has access to that except for those within the centralized nation. But the distributed SDR ledger would be decentralized. So all transactions within this digital distributed ledger technology will be able to see each other's transactions. And so there is no 
Fugazi where somebody can say, oh, uh, I didn't get that money because the other ledgers would be able to see if that transaction transpired or not. So for transparency, it's excellent. So basically, the reason why there needs to be this SDR exchange is so you don't have to have all of this inside of an IMF blockchain or, or centralized ledging system. Because there's only two ways to do this. You either create a centralized blockchain that you have to allow all these other central banks a gateway into. So you have one network and they all have to get into that network. And then once they're in that network, they're under the rule or regime of the controller of that network, whoever is controlling that network, and then they can operate within it. But that would create a centralized network because you have to go through this proxy, which in this case would be the IMF. And therefore, the IMF could theoretically control everything. To get away from the IMF controlling everything, you can create a decentralized ledger, a distributed ledger system, but have a centralized currency that is used to transact within this distributed ledger. And that's how I would say countries would agree to this. Because most countries would not agree to a centralized ledger because they would know they're basically giving up their sovereignty to the IMF. But if it was a decentralized ledger, well, it's almost impossible to cheat. Everything's transparent. So there would be a higher likelihood that this would actually be implemented. So again, to simplify, central banks would log on to an IMF exchange. In that exchange, they would use their local currency and purchase digital SDRs or an SDR coin or an IMF coin, whatever they want to call it. And then the IMF would allocate the, tr the conversion between their local currency and SDRs onto an SDR wallet, which would be allocated to their distributed SDR ledger. And so then they could use their SDRs inside this distributed SDR ledger system. Also, the IMF is going to profit off this. This is one thing I didn't mention, is the conversion rate on this exchange. The IMF will be paid a conversion fee. They can still have their own personal centralized controlling ledgers of their own central banks and then have a global decentralized communication ledger where all the banks can communicate worldwide. If they had some kind of protocol like that, they could allocate NFTs and smart contracts. So then they could do trading within this ledger system. They can start allocating NFTs to certain commodities. Let's say like the oil is allocated with an NFT because an NFT being non-fungible, it's a unique identifier. And that unique identifier, it can be allocated to an asset group like uh, the oil. And then you can create smart contracts correlated with those NFTs for trade. So it's almost like futures contracts. But you can, dis you can do this utilizing a decentralized ledger system. So let's say Saudi Arabia wants to sell oil to Russia on the 30th of September, and they agree to sell 1 million barrels for, let's say, 5 billion SDRs. They can allocate that as a smart contract, initializing this as an asset group with the NFTs, and then this can be set out on this ledger, and that all can be done digitally with no issues being cross-border payments, currency transmission, none of it. It's all been dealt with because now it's under the stability of this IMF distributed SDR ledger. And then you really do have a centralized global CBDC currency. So it is something that can be initiated today. I've given you a blueprint of how it could work. If you guys want more details about these things, you guys let me know in the comments 
and I can do future videos like specifically how does a distributed SDR ledger work? How does the bridging system work? How does a protocol within a ledger system work or a blockchain system work? So anyways, that's about all I have for this hot take. Hopefully that was insightful. That was helpful. And you guys leave your comments and questions in the video below. But until next time, appreciate you tuning in here at Toilet Time TV. And we'll see you in the next hot take.